Overnight, two BNSF locomotives hauling six empty cars derailed on Anacortes Island along a stretch of rail behind the Swinomish Casino on tribal land. A derailment that drew a response from the Coast Guard, EPA, State Department of Ecology, and Skagit EMS. It also drew a crowd. Well, I'm concerned about the leakage, all the, all the diesel that is being leaked into the ground. Yeah, yeah, that's... That's a normal concern when a diesel um, railroad derails as happened on Wednesday night. That's a BNSF train in Swinomish Reservation, again, a native reservation leaking 3,100 gallons of diesel into the soil. A few more details about it. State authorities said the fuel spill does not appear to have flowed towards the water, though such an assurance is cold comfort amid the disaster in eastern Ohio, where residents' concerns about the long term impacts of the wreck on local water, soil, and air quality remain high more than a month after that crash. Again, talking about East Palestine. So here we have it again. There's another derailment. And just hang on to see what the rail industry is saying and doing. Have they changed their tune? Will it be this spill? Um, For this particular spill in Washington State, there's no no official statement on what happened. um, And no explanation, no injuries were reported. But this was also on the back of yet another derailment that happened in Arizona on the California Arizona border. It was carrying corn syrup, which in Sure is fine for the soil. I don't know. Uh, apparently, no, none of those. Um, there again, no injuries necessarily, no immediate damage. Um, but as a reminder, on average, the United States has three derailments a day. So this is not new. This is just par for the course, and apparently a, a price that they're worth paying. Now, have rail industry leaders changed their tune on what they're going to do? Not really, in fact, they are doubling down in lobbying, that's right. Um, So while this month senators have introduced a bill to try and combat some of these derailments and the causes of them, it's called the Railway Safety Act. It enhances safety requirements for trains carrying hazardous materials and increases fines for safety violations. And yet, of course, the proposal is facing already some stiff resistance from Republicans. And now we know why. All right, so new disclosures are revealing, and this is from Sludge. New disclosures reveal that Union Pacific's PAC made $15,000 in contributions last month, all to Republicans in the House and Senate, given less than two weeks after the Ohio derailment. Um, and then BNSF, again, the, the trains that de- derailed most recently, they contributed $2,500 from its PAC. Again, somehow trains have PACs these days to Republican Representative Sam Graves of Missouri after last month's train derailment in Ohio, according to just released FEC reporting. Graves is the chairman of the House Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure, which is jurisdiction over transit and rail transportation. And this is a fun quote. They got what they paid for. Here's Graves' thoughts. He says, told Fox News that he was in no rush to consider rail safety legislation. However, he wanted to fully understand the facts involved and wait for the National Transportation Safety Board to report on the incident. Um, And in total over the past two decades, I mean, we're truly in monopoly times. Open Secrets and their analysis shows that the rail industry has spent more than $650 million on federal lobbying. Um, And that's just one aspect of this. But Farron, I wanted to kick it to you because it's like they're not even hiding it anymore. (laughs) It's a lot almost like the gun industry. I mean, we we, we have a a shooting and then suddenly, uh oh, we gotta start giving all this money so they don't do anything to rein us in a little bit. And we're seeing the same thing here with the rail industry and they know exactly which lawmakers they need to target. They know who those key votes are, they know where their home bases are, they gotta go after those folks. And that's exactly what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And this phenomenon, like you said, we're having three crashes on average per day. It's not like these crashes just started either. Uh, for about 10 years, I was you know, working at uh, or with the smog blog doing environmental writing. We had a writer who's pretty much his main focus was on the rail disasters that were happening at an alarming rate. We, mm. we called them bomb trains. That writer, by the way, was Justin Makoka. And he would write about these things you know, every week, several train crashes where you'd have diesel spills, you would have oil spills, you'd have natural gas leaking out. And nobody paid any attention on the national level to the fact that this was happening. 
So I guess the, the the one bright side now is finally people are starting to pay attention. They're starting to see how disastrous is the fact that we've got railways in this country, the actual tracks themselves that are over 60 years old and have not been maintained. We have trains with braking systems from the Civil War still in operation. Yeah, I would say this is something that we have to focus on and now that the light is being shown on it, we're also starting to see the money flowing. And we'll see as these disasters continue to mount, whether or not these Republicans are willing to look the other way as their campaign coffers get filled. It's a touchy subject right now, so maybe the public pressure can be enough to undo that corporate money. It typically isn't, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we saw a little bit of, you know, Marjorie Green, we've got to have a committee hearing. We need to talk about this. You know, Trump's there, he's selling his Trump water. <laughs> Maz, what do you make of this? First of all, uh, you said that they gave the guy $2,500 to lobby him. Like, I thought we, that doesn't, that's like nothing. Like, is that all it takes? Because <laughs> right. I'm going to start having this guy lobby for me. I mean, $2,500. Uh, that's some cheap lobbying, but all right, I guess uh, inflation doesn't apply as much to these uh, members of Congress. Secondly, I live in a world where I thought trains were safe, and I guess they're not. And we're seeing three times a day, we're getting derailments and accidents. You would think with all the, just like uh, uh, Farron was just saying, you would think with the with advancement in technology, we would have found a way to have the train remain hooked on so that <laughs> You might get one derailment a year. I mean, what are these guys, are they speeding up around the corner? What's going on? And by the way, if you're carrying toxic materials, take your time. You don't need to rush toxic materials anywhere. I know that if I have hot water, I'm not running to the, in the throughout the house with the hot water. I'm, I'm walking slowly to deliver the tea to whoever asked for the tea, slow it down. So all of that to say, I didn't know this was a problem, but now I do. And now I'm never going to be comfortable on any train that I travel on. Thank you very much. Yeah, the, the trains that are left that don't cost an arm and a leg and actually go to any of the cities that you're performing in. Um, like yeah. if you want to get there, you know, at, at 10 times the, the time, it's, yeah, I mean, look, if there's one takeaway, no. If there's a million takeaways from the pandemic, right, and the supply, ch supply chain stuff, it's, can we at least get our rails working properly, right? You'd think that it would be an economic investment for the Republicans and the Democrats and the Biden administration to actually invest more, have more people working them, get better tracks, get more tracks. I thought Biden was the train guy. You know, if there's one thing we should be able to do, it is move our own goods and services and products within this country, right? We can't even do that. We can't even do that because corporations got a corporation. They got to have theirs and they're not stopping here. Um, <clears throat> and I want to just turn because it's not just Republicans. Sadly, this week, an independent government board controlled by appointees of the president, Joe Biden, okayed a massive $31 billion railway consolidation, a merger of two of the biggest rail um, companies. Canadian Pacific and Kansas City Southern. Um, so this is the surface, this, this board is called the Surface Transportation Board. It approved this merger of Canadian Pacific and Kansas City Southern, the sixth and seventh biggest railroads on the continent. The merger is creating a new railroad stretching from Vancouver to Nova Scotia all the way down to Veracruz, a port on the Gulf of Mexico. It's gonna be the first merger of two class one railroads, which basically means uh, large rail companies in two decades. Now, it's important to know also that five of the members on that board were appointed by Joe Biden himself. And so I don't see how you push this forward, especially in the wake of East Palestine, but oh, we got the money. So Canadian Pacific and Kansas City Southern spent $2 million lobbying in support of the merger, including hiring a former Senator, Byron Dorgan. Tight, amazing, they're, they're just there for hire, Kirsten Cinema. Please retire yourself. Um, and so this is happening all in the wake. Now it's important to know like back in the 70s, there were 40 major railroad companies. And now again, we're saying there's seven now, now six of this. Um, and this is at a time where like Biden's administration has stopped things like the merger of JetBlue and Spirit Airways, which I think was a win. And yet here you have this, Farron, I'm just like, again, Biden, railroad guy, what's going on? <laughs> 
You know, it, it, it never works out well for consumers when we see all of these major corporations start to merge with one another. You know, whether it's you know, Dow DuPont merging, you know, two of the biggest chemical polluters in the country. It didn't work very well with the airlines. All it does is take away choice. And now we've got it with the railways as well. And to me, it's a very weird situation because just, you know, building off of what Maz said, like, how are they just not being more responsible with their cargo and you know, if I were the company, like here's a here's a good example. If UPS was at the point where three times a day a UPS truck just tipped over and spilled all their packages, mm -hmm. UPS would freak the heck out and say, "Oh my, okay, we got to figure this out because this is costing us money now. Let's stop flipping the trucks over." Yet so far there hasn't been a single uh, rail company that said, "All right, whoa, 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 whoa." Why do we keep falling down? You know, that part of our job is to just be be straight and go. And we somehow can't do that. We're tipping, we're costing us in the future, it's gonna be, you know, tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions in lawsuits. We're losing cargo, we're losing time, we're losing money. This is hurting us as a company, and we're just not gonna fix it. Mm -hmm. Just from a pure business standpoint, whoever's making the decisions at these companies. All of them, they're idiots. I mean, that's the bottom line because you're costing yourself money by yes. not fixing the problem here. And so now we're gonna have even fewer people making those horrible decisions that are going to affect a lot more railways with this merger. Well, Farron, you know, the you know, they've been getting away with it. As I was just saying, I really didn't know there was this many derailments. So because it had been not as big news until this uh, Palestine uh, uh, accident that happened. I think they were getting away with it and they were thinking, well, listen, it'll help our stock prices go up. It goes back to this whole conversation of regulation and how a lot of times Republicans say, we don't want any regulation, let the company's private, private enterprise will lead the way. And you realize, no, when you let private enterprise lead the way, they just end up buying more yachts for themselves and letting trains derail and just you know sweeping it out of the rug. So unfortunately, that's the that's what the the capitalistic world that we live in. Uh, but we need clearly we need more regulations. And you're right. You would think it it kind of goes in hand in hand with with the conversations we have about modernizing our um, um, energy sources and how people go. No, we can't do that. And you go listen. In the long run, it's good for us, as you were just saying. It's good for business. It's good for everybody. You just gotta bite the bullet a little bit and invest and we haven't invested. That's the whole thing with the infrastructure bill that just passed. I mean, you know, I don't know if you guys have been in Japan. I, I got on that I got that on that oh. bullet train in Japan. Yeah. I mean they they got it. They got I don't know how many derailments they're getting a day, but they seem to have their act together. Um, and here we are, you know, every th every uh, every day three trains are going off the track. And um yeah, we we, we can and exactly right. It's capitalism gone exactly the way capitalism's gonna go. Um, when it is unchecked, um, which is it is far more um, lucrative to allow trains to derail, to poison entire communities, to poison groundwater, to poison soil, because you're ultimately not going to clean that up. You're not going to live there. You're not. That is not factored into your cost benefit analysis. No one is holding you accountable. And sadly, waterways and soil, I think they should, but they don't have lawyers. They don't have teams of lawyers the way railways have teams of lawyers. And they don't have shareholders except for all of us who survive on those waterways and that soil for you know food and sustenance. But these bloodsuckers clearly don't eat what we eat. Um, so that's, that's it. And look, it's very predictable that it's very sad and predictable that Joe Biden would do something like this. Um, and I'm looking at Pete Buttigieg, I'm looking at Secretary of Transportation Buttigieg. Uh, to do something. This is not about waiting on corporations to find it within their hearts because here we are a month after this spill and what's in their heart? It's just making more money. It's lobbying, it's buying their stock back and making no promises. So stop holding your breath and start actually forcing them to, to implement these regulations. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that 
All you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.